Good afternoon, sister. May the Lord bless you. Sister Mary Luisa, in the most recent Bible studies, the Lord has spoken to us through you in many different occasions and has repeated that we must get rid of our spiritual poverty. I would like, sister, if today you could teach us, give us those key points, those tools, in order to fulfill with that commandment of God that he has given us through you. May God bless you, sister. We love you with all of our hearts. Well, we need to stop being foolish because sometimes there's a lot of foolishness in our hearts. A lot of foolishness of not wanting to change. And in our daily life, in our daily living, we are always failing God with our foolishness, pride, haughtiness, and arrogance, bad temper, and wrath, and arguments, and jealousies, and envy, and mm, complaining against God, and, and gossip, and criticism, lying, and deceiving others trying to seek my own things and trying to take advantage of others and taking advantage of circumstances for my own profit, always. We forget that God is by our side and is looking and observing, is following us. The Lord is watching. That is forgotten. And you and everyone is at home or maybe out in the supermarket, in a shopping center, in college, in school, any place or at work, we forget God is there. And people say, oh no, God is just in the church when I go and congregate there at night. Here, I can do whatever I want. Here... I can get involved in gossip and envy, and I can seek my own, and if I can steal and take away an object from my workplace, and if I can steal my, my employer's time, well, he's very rich, he has a lot of money, a half hour that I steal or take this, maybe I steal $10, this is nothing. No one sees me. There's no one from church here, so no one sees me. That is how we think sometimes. And when we think that way, we don't please God. We are not leading a spiritual life because living a poor spiritual life is doing all of these displeasing things. And they seem so small and little, so simple. And people think that not committing adultery or not committing murder or not stealing a great amount of money, they think that because they're not doing that, 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 that they're not sinning. But as it turns out, all of these sins that people say, oh, those are just little sins. Those are little things. No, they are little sins. And, but that keeps us away from God. What we call little that keeps us away from God. It turns us away. And when we are involved in all of these different matters, God turns away. And that we call being spiritually poor. Because there you are involved in these different types of matters, envy, jealousy, gossip, being discontent, and you're angry, you're upset, you're full of wrath, vengeance, and resentment. You're involved in that. In that moment, and maybe someone comes or the devil uses somebody and tempts you, tests you, and says, oh, do you know that someone was speaking badly about you? They said this or that. Since you're in your flesh and you're weak and you give free reins to these matters and these problems become even bigger 
and your sin becomes even bigger. It becomes greater than it was. But if you are in the Lord and you're patient, you have modesty and tolerance and mercy and forgiveness and peace and tranquility, and someone comes to you and says that, we say, let's be patient. Let people talk. Let people say what they want. Let them criticize. Let them speak slander and judge. We must continue forward seeking God. Why? Because we are spiritual. Because your life is spiritualized. It is not in the flesh. That's it, brothers and sisters. This is what that spiritual poverty is. That all of those things that we think are not too bad, but is bad before God because it keeps us away from him and we become materialistic. Other people say, well, you become carnal or you become worldly, someone could say. And we say materialistic because we are not or our hearts are not prepared to face something unhappy or displeasing, and immediately we become full of wrath and full of anger. And so we clash. And there we end up doing what is wrong. And so long as that spiritual poverty exists, we cannot triumph. We could not obtain the great rewards God is offering. This is the constant struggle we have in the fight. This is why daily we are fighting. We have to fight because it's not just to come here at night, but throughout the day, what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you thinking? We can have fun and we can laugh, but our heart needs to be clean from ever doing anything evil or bad that could offend our neighbor or any person. Let us be faithful to God and let us be sincere, turning away from all of those little sins that people call them. Those are the ones that cause even greater harm. They cause great harm. And that is what we call spiritual poverty. And if you want to learn, start to read Proverbs. There are many rules, many basic rules to live our life in an orderly fashion, to live our up, an upright life before God. Proverbs teaches us many things. Psalms too, they teach many things. And so everything that you read in the Bible, analyze and say, I want to change. I don't want to do these wicked, evil things. I want to do what is right and good. I want God to help me. And in that way, When you now live a spiritual life according to what God wants, God then begins to give you spiritual gifts and God begins to give you responsibilities. God begins to make of you a responsible person and says, this person is responsible and capable of working and managing my church and managing people, capable of giving guidance and teaching, capable of of guiding and advising others. That is what God decides in the end when we do things right. And this topic of spiritual poverty is very long, but I hope that the little that we have talked about you've understood. 